Hi, Andreas from Total here, and today we're going to learn about authentication. Now, if you've been following these videos, you would have seen video number four, creating dynamic websites with APIs. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend going and watching that before you continue with this one. Now, in that video, we made a request to a public API and then used the data we got back from the server as a response to render onto our website. Now, most of the time when you request data from the server, that server is not actually public and require you to authenticate before you can access its data. And the way that works is the server will use an authentication provider. That can either be the server itself, but more and more it's becoming a separate service. What the way this works is the user will make a request to the server. It will then have the authentication provider verify that the user are who they say they are before returning a response. This normally happens in two steps. The first step is the user will pass along its authentication credentials to a login endpoint. Now, this is not always exactly login. Sometimes it's sign-in. A lot of different services do this slightly different, but the basic idea is always the same. So you will pass along, the user will pass along their credentials, and then the server will use the authentication provider to first check those credentials, verify that that user actually exists and has this password, before generating a temporary access token that is going to return to the user. The user can then pass this access token, token along with any future requests, and the server will verify that the access token is correct before returning any data back. So you might be asking, why not just pass along my email and password on every request and then save this whole access token business? And the reason for that is the internet can sometimes be a scary place. <clears throat> and when you make a request to a server, it usually passes through several computers before it actually gets there. And at every one of those computers, any one of those locations, someone could be listening in. And while all this communication should be encrypted, even the best security is not perfect, and there's always a chance someone's listening in. And if that should happen, it's much better that an attacker get a hold of your temporary access token than your actual credentials that they can reuse again and again and again. So by having the access token be temporary and expire, you're actually adding a layer of security. So this raises a question, where does Total actually fit in to this whole thing? So Total is only for building front-end applications. Whenever you're building an application like this that uses an authenticated API, you're going to pair Total up with a backend provider. Some of the really popular no-code backend providers are Sano or Superbase is also a great choice. But you can choose whatever backend you want. Total works with everything. So Total lets you build a nice login screen that lets the user send their credentials to the server. And when the response comes back with the access token, Total lets you store that in a secure cookie so it can be sent along with future requests. But Total is not actually where you authenticate the user. That happens on the backend. To demonstrate how this works, I've created a jokes application where authenticated users can read jokes and also submit their own. In this case, we're going to use Sano as a backend. If you're not familiar with Sano, it doesn't matter. You don't really need to understand how it works for the example, but I really recommend checking it out. It's a really good no-code backend that can get you started with Total really quickly. So in this case, we have two tables in Sano. We've got our puns, which is where our jokes are stored, and a user table with all our authenticated users. Right now, we only have the one. Um, in order to actually see these jokes, you need to be authenticated. So the first thing we need to do is set up our login flow. So I'm going to go to our login page. I've done all the UI ahead of time because that's not the point of this video. And if you want to see how that's done, go back to some of the previous videos and we'll take you through how to build beautiful UI in Total. So in this case, I already have my form and I've also actually bound that up to our this credentials object. So every time you edit the email or password, it'll update the credentials object. To learn more about how that works, go and check out our interactive application video. So what I want to do now is I want to add an API to this and I'm going to call it login. Login, there we go. And I have this variable where I've stored my Sano base URL. So 
For Sano, every application has a different URL, of course, that you call. And then on top of that, you can add a path to actually get to where to the request you need. So in this case, we're going to say auth and then login. And this shouldn't actually be a get request. So get is normally what we use for fetching data, but we're going to actually send some data. So in this case, Sano says we should have a post request. Now, I know all this because I've set all the API, uh, all the APIs in, in Sano, so you can go and check that in Sano. You, you define that when you build this application in Sano. But this is sort of the standard way that Sano usually suggests you doing authentication. Um, so the last thing we need to add onto this request is we actually need to send the credentials along as our body. And the credentials here are the email and password. The reason why this already works is because I've done it ahead of time. Right? Um, the last thing we need to do is that when we submit this form, we want to make that API request to uh, the login, like the login API request. So I'm going to choose my form here. I'm going to go to events, form, and submit. And then I'm going to add call login. And I actually want to do something on success, but it's much nicer to have the data available before we do the next step. So I'm just going to stop there for now and go into test mode. And then I'm going to go and actually try and call this API. And you can see absolutely nothing happened because while we did make the request, we didn't tell the applications to do anything afterwards. So now I'm going to exit test mode and I'm going to go have a look at my API here. And we can see that the data now has gotten back because we made that call and it's gotten, given us back this auth token. And that is our access token that we want to actually store. So I'm going to say done here. And then I'm going to go back and continue editing my submit workflow because now I have the data, data available for the next steps. So when I've done login, I have this little on success uh, workflow. And this actually works exactly the same way that our submit event. The submit event triggers when the user submits the form, and this success event happens when this API request is done. And when we click that, we can edit the workflow for that. And this way you can actually call workflows in series like this uh, as many times as you need if you have multiple things you need to do. So in this case, what we want to do on, on success we want to set session cookies. This is the action you're looking for in total, set session cookies. And right here, we can specify an access token and an ID token. Most of the time, we just need the access token. There's a few cases where some application actually wants you to use the ID token, either in addition or instead of. And therefore, you also have an option of using an ID token. But for this example, we're just using the access token. So I'm going to set that. And I'm going to go and choose that from our login request, data, and auth token. So here we got our authentication token, and then we're going to go and set that as our action token in our session cookies. And actually setting these session cookies is also a request that Toddle makes. And this has to be a request because that's the only way to set secure cookies. So we're going to have to wait a little bit longer before we can actually do the next step. In this case, on success, we're going to do a third workflow and all we need to do here is go to URL and then we just do slash. So what we're saying here is that we're going to make a request to login. We'll get our access token back. We're going to then save that access token in a secure cookie. And when we're done doing that, we're going to go to the home page. And then when you're on the home page, that cookie is going to be available. And now we're going to be able to make authenticated requests. So let's go and see how that looks. We're going to open up our preview. Then we're going to provide our credentials and press login. And we can see right after that, it takes us right to the home page. Now, surprisingly, this does says, say authentic, uh, unauthorized authentication required. And what gives? We just logged in. And the reason for that is we need to let the API request on the home page know that we're actually allowed to do this. We need to pass along our credentials we just got. And not every server will accept those credentials in the same way. So we have to specify how do we want to pass these credentials along. So I'm going to go to my homepage. And on this, I have an API request called puns. 
And right down here, we have this authentic authorization header, uh, this authorization section, I should say. And this allows you to choose how to pass your authorization along. Now, if it's just a cookie, uh, that should just work. But a common pattern is using this bearer token, where you're adding a header called uh, authorization, and it says bearer and then the token. You see that quite a lot on, on, um, on different kind of backends. That's the most common way they want you to pass along authentication. And we can do that simply by saying authorization, bearer, and then access token. And what it's going to do is pass our access token along uh, in the correct manner. So let's go and say done, and let's go back to our homepage and do a refresh. And now we can see it's loading our data because it's got the credential needed, and it'll actually show our jokes. Um, so let's see the first one here. Diarrhea is hereditary. It runs in your genes. So we've seen here how Total lets you build login screens where users can send their credentials to a server. And when an access token comes back, Total can store that in a secure cookie so it can be used to authenticate future requests. Total can be combined with any backend, and this allows you to build secure applications where users only have access to the data they're supposed to see. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't tried Total yet, uh, go and try it now. You can sign up for free and you can build all sorts of applications. Um, we've got more videos coming out in this series, so if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. And thank you very much for watching.